Oh, hey, gang. It's uh, Kevin Strange back here again, uh, back in Strangeville. It's a, uh, it's a nice, cool, quiet summer weekday afternoon here in Strangeville. The year is 2020, and I... I'm creating a graphic novel. Today, I'm gonna chit chat with you and I'm gonna teach you how to color flat and finish an entire comic book page. So you guys have been following along throughout this whole process, possibly, unless you're a new viewer. As I've constructed the uh, Cockhammer Lives, a graphic novel sequel to my 2009 feature film, Cockhammer. You've watched me go through the entire thumbnail process with little note cards. You've watched me pencil pages on uh, big 11 by 17 paper. You've watched me digitally transfer those pages. From the pencils, you've watched me ink those pages. I've now lettered the entire comic book. And now I'm going to show you how to color flat and finish this page. So you, you will have seen the entire comic book making process from thumbnail to finished color page. And yes, gang, I do this all myself. No help. This is a one-man project, one-man graphic novel, and it is a ton of work. I've been working on this comic book since February. It's now August. So six months in, and I'm finally to the color and finishing phase of the comic, and I'm not even a quarter of the way through that process. It's a very, very long process. I'm going to... Um, how the fuck do I share this stream on? No, that's not it. I'm going to share this stream on Twitter. Try to get some people in here. I guess I got to go over to the YouTube page where it's airing live. And uh, uh, this, and I should be streaming live over here. I am. So let me mute this computer. Okay, now I'm gonna just give me just uh you know give me a second here, gang. You know how all this works. You watch enough live streams to know what we're doing here. Watch me color a cock camera lives graphic novel. How do you spell novel? Live right now. Sorry about my arm being in the way of the camera. It's awkward the way I have this set up. I have uh... 
Okay. We're good here. All right. So we are going to color flat and finish this page. And so, as you can see over here, uh, slightly out of focus, you see all the, so this is my iPad Pro that we're working with here. We're working on my iPad Pro. And the program we're using is Clip Studio, very cheap, but very, very powerful program. So we're gonna, we're gonna change the focus on this fucking thing. Whoa. Oh, Mr. Focus. No, I guess not. Um, so this is as good as it's going to get. Anyway, you can see all the different layers here. It's a bunch of text layers from the lettering. My ink layer. I have my pencil layer off, and then I have a white layer solid white layer behind everything. So the first thing that I do when I get ready to color flat is I go underneath the ink layer, I add a new layer and I call it flats. And this is going to be our color flats. Now there's a, there's several things that we have to do here in the uh, coloring process that involve the tools over here on the uh, on the side and these are things that you kind of have to play with and you have to find your uh, comfort level within the settings of these tools so the most important tool is the paint bucket tool which is very hard to see here I understand I, I apologize I have a very janky uh, setup but I have the um, the paint bucket selected and there's a really important they so let's see the paint bucket has all these settings off to the side I don't know if I'm even, I don't know why I'm even bothering I'm trying to show this to you guys it doesn't matter there's all these settings off to the side, and they are your close gap settings, your apply to connected pixels, your color margin, your area scaling, your refer to multiple, your opacity, and your anti-aliasing. These are all extremely uh, sensitive settings in the paint bucket, and they will make your life hell, or they will make your life super easy when it comes to flatting a page. Um, And the other tool is down here is the uh, the lasso fill tool. And so what we're gonna do here on this page is uh, we're going to color flat everything and then we're gonna lasso tool, fill in all the little stuff that the, uh, that the uh, paint bucket tool missed. And it can, it can often appear like this is really easy, but again, these settings off to the side have to be calibrated in such a way that your particular drawing style is complemented. Some people like to close all of their ink lines, and some people uh, like to leave a lot of open, uh, open spots, depending on their style, and the open spots can wreak havoc on the paint bucket tool if... Um, if you uh, if you don't calibrate these settings the right way, and even then, it's often um, difficult for the program to sort of uh, in, uh, in, into it uh, what you're what you're going for. So it's a lot of back and forth. It's a lot of fill this, deselect, fill this, uh, uh, go to the lasso tool, fix it, fix it, fix it. So it's a lot of fill, and then it's a lot of fill and fix, fill and fix, fill and fix. And there's nothing particularly sexy about the flatting process it's really just uh you just kind of got to go for it so this actually isn't the first nixon Ho like this scene here is actually has uh has uh, two or three other pages that come before it and i haven't color flatted them yet uh, i wanted to pick a page with the least amount of gratuitous nudity and um sexual stuff in it to show you I, I wasn't able to i don't know if there's a, a single page in this comic book that doesn't have titties so you're gonna have to deal with a couple of nipples 
Uh, but other than that, it's a pretty um, a pretty mild page compared to some of the other crazy shit that goes on in this graphic novel. So bear with me. I'm going to, I have to figure out what the colors are going to be for uh, this background. And then I have to figure out the colors for, I haven't colored the Black Mage Diary yet. I haven't colored Nixon and Hogan yet. I have colored this um, prostitute. So I'm going to go ahead and go grab her colors from another page. Um, move this out of the way for just a second in case there's something I can dox myself with. I don't think there is. It's all comic pages, so it doesn't matter. We're going to open up uh, this page. We're going to open up this page and grab the colors off of the hooker, the whore, in this page that I just finished. And then we will uh, we'll start filling her in. So this is how it works. I take the paint bucket tool. I have my flats layer selected. I have my refer to other. No, I didn't. I have my refer to other layers selected. And now I can paint bucket fill the hooker like so. And again, this looks like it's just something super easy. Like all I got to do is tap the screen a couple times, but these settings are calibrated specifically to my needs, to meet my needs. So you can see, for example, this spot right here didn't get caught. So I'm going to go to the uh, lasso fill tool and then that and then fill that up. And I can also see that there's some messy shit here going on with the inks. So I'm going to actually, I take this opportunity when I'm in here doing the detail stuff to clean up some of these little trouble spots with the ink. So I'm going to go to my uh, eraser uh, tool and I'm going to go back to my ink slayer and I'm going to come in and just actually want to bring my brush size down a little bit. And clean a little bit of this. And I, ha I have a uh, hotkey here off to the side. My uh, T1 is my hotkey for backspace. So when I'm working and I and I do something like this, where I, I, I don't even know if you guys can see this, but I can. There's a little spot of color that came through right here. So I'm going to backspace that. And then I'm going to, uh, uh, that, that's my undo button. My T1 hotkey is my undo. And then I'm just going to come back, and now I've I've kept that uh, spot from coming out. And this stuff is all really, you know, really small on the page. It's not really going to be even noticeable or seen. But since I'm already down here, it doesn't take long to sit here and hit these little spots where I kind of was sloppy with the inks. This only takes a second if I'm not talking, you know, to uh, kind of clean this up a little bit. And overall, it will. Um, it's, it's little tiny details that you won't necessarily see, but a cu the cumulative effect of that can be kind of a sloppy uh, overall work over 150 pages. So I just like to do my do my uh, due diligence here, clean up little problem spots as I'm um, flatting. And uh, so now I'm back on my flats layer. I'm back on my... Uh, paint bucket and I'm going to continue on and paint bucket. Uh, so see this spot here isn't this piece of her ear uh, doesn't completely uh, close in with the hair. So when I click this, it's going to fill in a little bit of the hair and I don't want it in that hair layer. That's where the lasso tool comes in. So I'm going to finish off her, her ear and her face here and her head. And I can actually, um, one of the cool things about the paint bucket tool in this program is I can, uh, I can hold the uh, pin against the page and drag, and I can actually drag through and finish most of the color without lifting up the um, uh, the, the pen, the pen tool, the, or the pencil, and it really helps uh, get through the process. So now, but we still have this little gap right here. So I'm going to go back to my uh, uh, lasso tool, but. I don't have a color in here yet, so I'm actually going to go to um, I'm actually going to go down here to the uh, transparent 
so you have uh, you have your little um, your colors down here. You have your foreground color, background color, and transparent. And if I click on transparent and then uh, use my lasso tool around my lasso fill tool, which is different from the regular lasso select tool, um, and I do that, it actually pulls that color out. It works as an eraser. So that is pretty good on the um, on the skin of the hooker. I think we're good there. So let's go do our hair real quick. I'm gonna grab this, uh, and I'm using the um, I'm using the uh, ink dropper. The ink dropper uh, uh, tool actually allows me to. It's a it's a selector tool. It selects colors, so that allowed me to turn my foreground into the blue from. Uh, this previous page that I've already done. Now I go back to my uh, paint bucket, back to the flats layer, and then I do the same thing I did with the skin. And you see how that uh, blue blended down into the skin in the same spot because it it's not a uh, that line isn't filled. So this go I have to go back and forth with this. It's really a tedious process, but this is a very important part of. Your comic, um, and now I can't go in. If I go in and do the um, uh, do the same thing I did with the uh, with the um, uh, transparent instead of the color here for my uh, uh, lasso fill, all this is going to do is take the color completely out of it. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to go back to my backspace, and uh, so I'm going to take the ink dropper fill back to the uh, skin color, and then I'm just gonna go to my uh, G-Pen, go to about a, a size 20 brush, and then I'm just gonna, by hand, I'm gonna fix this. And now that's good. I don't have to worry about that again, but I have a little spot right here. See all these little little bitty spots that didn't fill up? Um, we're gonna go in, pick our blue color, pick our lasso fill, and we're gonna fix these little spots that didn't get, um, didn't get filled up. And this is really a tedious process. This can take hours to do on a, on a single page, depending on how complex the page is. Uh, now I'm going to, since this uh, blue came out of the, out of the hair and into the background, I'm going to go back to my transparent and pull that completely out. And that kind of looks like shit. So I'm going to go into um, what I'm actually going to do sometimes when, when this happens, um, I'm actually just going to go back to the ink layer go to my G pen, go to my black color. My size 10 is what I uh, do my outlines with. And I'm just going to fill this. I'm just going to fill this hair, uh, close this hair off like that. And then go back to my flats layer, go back to my uh, lasso, my transparent, and I'm going to pull this little piece out. And now it's good. Looks fine now. So there's all kinds of little uh, back and forth and back and forth little things that you have to do. And like I said, it's really tedious uh, to get all this done, but we're we're well on our way. So we're going to do the hooker's eye color now. Let's go in here. We're on our flats layer, paint bucket tool. Didn't get it all. Go to the lasso. And we're going to just do this over and over again until we get all of the page done. So I'm, I'm at this point, I'm done giving you a uh, kind of a play-by-play -play of the tools, and we're just going to hang out and talk while I do all this because this is a this is a long, uh, tedious process. I'm not going to tell you every single little fucking thing I do. So it's been a while since I've done a uh, since I've done a live stream. Um, I've been off of uh, most social media uh, for the past several months, really working on my. Working on my book here, and also just um, the political and social climate is so toxic right now. And it is something that I have I have no time or tolerance for. I really, you know, I, I say this often uh, in my uh, to my friends, but I say it also say it often publicly is that I, I believe that social media is an inherently feminine. Uh, enterprise and I think that uh, that men who are on their purpose and trying to achieve uh, their version of greatness and trying to conquer conquer the universe in their own special way 
they have uh, the the all of the social media shame all of the the social climbing all of the social media validation all of the uh all of the nonsense that goes on on social media is a uh, all of that is hyper feminine comes from the feminine and is and is uh, has a feminine imperative to it and then uh grown men will try to tell you that uh now I have to choose the uh, skin color and the uh, color of Nixon and Hogan's clothes for the first time here. So I'm actually going to be uh, experimenting a little bit. I kind of know I've drawn these guys a million times in their own comics. So I kind of know what their color scheme is. Uh, so I'm just going to play with it here a little bit while we talk and uh, kind of get it, get it down, get it hammered out here. Um, and I'll just play with it a little bit, figure out what, colors I like, what I think is too dark, what I think is too light. That's kind of perfect for Nixon's hoodie here. Um, so when, especially when things get, uh, like cancel culture gets going as crazy it is, as it is right now, I tend to just pull back completely because, gr you know, grown men will tell you that uh, you have to have social media to have a successful career. But most of the uh, grown men who say that have absolutely no career and spend most of their time uh, instead policing the careers of other men, oftentimes men that don't even have social media. So it's actually counterintuitive um, to believe that your, uh, your career lives or dies based on your social media clout. It, uh, it, it, it can if you choose to um, pursue a career uh, that requires uh, if, if you choose a, a feminine, a feminine career that requires all this social clout and everything, then yeah, sure. Absolutely. You're, uh, you're destined to, um, uh, to need to act like a woman in order to, and, and be on social media 24 hours a day and deal with uh, social or try, try to become social media gatekeepers and influencers over other men's lives and careers. Uh, if you, if you so choose to, uh, to go into a career like that. And a lot of people would argue that art of any kind is a feminine uh, career like that. And that, uh, that, uh, uh you know, this you're asking. You know, if you're getting into comics or, or movies or uh, video games or uh, fiction, you're asking for it. You're basically asking to be around a bunch of bitch-made men uh, who are going to gossip uh, and start rumors about you and try to gatekeep your career and uh, spend 24 hours a day on the internet. I uh, tend to uh, uh, disagree with that on its face. I believe that. Um, I believe that that. Bitch made men uh, can infiltrate any industry, and I would argue that the 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 most successful and uh, absolute greatest of all time uh, men that are in these industries are are very masculine men with with a masculine imperative, who um, who uh, achieve their greatness because of their drive, determination, refusal to uh, to give up uh, or accept failure and those kinds of things. And then it's bitch made men uh, around them that try to gatekeep others from finding that same uh, success as the greatest of all time in any particular medium. And so, yes, you can uh, uh, Corvo at AZ says he's pumping off. Well, that's good. Um, uh, are you a uh, do you, are you a luber or a non luber? Because uh, like lubers think that all dudes jerk off with lube, and non lubers don't understand the the, the con like like neither like they they don't like neither one will concede that the other uh, has a has a point. Like they don't even realize the other exists. Okay, we can do the sort of leathery bits here for the uh, uh, Black Mage Diary. Uh, so anyway, when I when I, when I see the uh, you know social media get super toxic and bitch made and hysterically feminine, I tend to. Uh, 
I tend to exit. I exit stage left and I don't, and I, and I focus on my art and my, my legend, my legend grows and the legend of Strangeville and the greatness of Strangeville uh, grows year after year, decade after decade, uh, not because uh, I sit on, um, on the internet gossiping with men about other men and uh, gatekeeping the careers of other men, but because I work my fucking ass off. I don't accept failure. I don't accept any of the social media shaming that's uh, sent my way. I just work. I work and work and work, and I have created um, just an enormous catalog of art uh, that I think is one of the most, I mean, I'll, I'm going to toot my own horn here, gang. Uh, pumping off his code for praying to our Lord aggressively. Well, that's good too. I mean, do you use lube when you pray aggressively, or do you just do it dry? And you dry? Do you dry pray, or do you uh, do you um, do you uh, do you moisten up? How goes life? Life is good. Life is great because, as I've been saying, I spend my time uh, focused on these. Uh, large, like lofty goals, like this graphic novel that I'm working on here, I'm six months into the process and nobody cares if this thing gets made or not. I don't have a, 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 a like a business deadline. Like there's no publisher deadline that I'm working on. There's no uh, release date, there's no publishing uh, date or anything like that. No publication date that I'm, you know, I have to race to get uh, finished. I don't crowdfund before the book's done, so I don't have backers breathing down my neck waiting for the uh, the product to be finished uh, or anything like that. So every day, you know, I have to make the conscious choice to get up and work and work hard on a, uh, on a piece of art that uh, I don't even know if anybody's going to buy this. I, I don't know and I don't care because the uh, the sort of... Uh, the legend of Strangeville will live not because of how many books I sell upon release, but because um, Strangeville will endure decade after decade and will continue to create uh, renegade art that bucks the mainstream safe uh, narrative. Um, You know, all all art looks very similar right now. All all art is safe. All art follows uh, specific uh, progressive guidelines. And if you don't create art like that, you're a Nazi. You know, fucking homophobe, transphobe, whatever. I don't remember. I think Nixon has green eyes. We're gonna give him green eyes in this one, uh, regardless. <clears throat> and he's got he's kind of a darker complected. He he may have a black dad. He's a lot more tanned than, uh, well, that's a little, little on the red there. Let's try to take that into the, take that more into the brown. Uh, yeah. That's a little too, that actually, I think that actually is black <laughs> right there. I think that's a little too uh, on the nose. I kind of uh, envision, uh, that's better. I kind of envision envision Nixon as as having a black dad, as being a half or maybe a quarter black. Uh, he doesn't know it. It doesn't inform his personality. I just think that that's the the. I mean, he obviously doesn't know his father. Uh, doesn't know what his actual race is. Um, I don't think that that in, informs his character, so to speak. Hang on, what's going on here? Fix this. See how messy this can get? And I just have to go back and forth and back. Come on, man. Come on, man. What is even happening here? Why is his neck a different color than his face? All right, there we go. Uh, exit stage left is the way to go. Just hunker down, create art. I approve. No, you're right. Absolutely. Do you dry pray? He's laughing at my joke. Well, you know, that's a good, it's a fair question, I think. Okay. fill all this back in see it's just this back and forth back and forth it's a real tedious process but it's one I, I i've shown you guys every single process here uh in the creation of this graphic novel and i kind of you know this will live on in posterity 
you know, long after the comics finished, long after um, we're on to, you know, Strangeville's on to bigger and better things, we'll always be able to go back and see this entire process, you know, uh, worked out on, live on video here, which I think is really, uh, really cool thing to do. I've watched other creators like uh, Doug Tenaple, creator of Earthworm Jim. I've watched him work out his uh, his his Bigfoot Bill and uh, Earthworm Jim comics live on stream, uh, hanging out and talking and, and making comics. And I just thought it was really neat you know, to see that organic process of comic book making uh, happen right before your eyes. And then eventually, uh, you know, get that, um, get that comic book yourself and, and be like, you know, as you're going through the pages, reading the story, you're like, man, I, I was there the day he, uh, he made that part. I was there. I watched him draw that page. You know, that, for me, that's a powerful, that's a powerful thing. And so I wanted to document, the process of creating my own comic book here on the uh, the YouTubers. So here we are uh, with uh, Half Black Nixon uh, created. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to Hogan, but you can watch how fast this goes once you get the once you get the color scheme uh, out, how quick I can grab the color scheme from from this panel and take it down to this panel where uh, Nixon is again, like, like working out that color the first time is kind of tough. And then after that, it, uh, it goes a little easier. So uh, I, I envision Hogan to be a much more, uh, much paler uh, color than Nixon. Uh, he is fully, fully Caucasoid and also never uh, gets outside and gets any exercise of any kind. So he's very, always very, um, has a has a squal is it a squalid pallor? Would that be the description? He's a very uh, very pale boy. Uh, get this going here, and then he has a an orange hoodie that's pretty bright. So we're going here with it like this. Whoop. Uh, does he have an, oh no, he has a brown hoodie and an orange hat. So we're going to go like this to the brown, brown hoodie. And then the hat is blazing orange. That's right. That's right. I've only been creating these characters for 15 fucking years. I think I'd know the, uh, Better art than mine. I admire how you're just diving into this endeavor. Fuck it, I'll do it myself. That kind of thing. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, that's how I do everything. I mean, every every uh, art form that I've decided to try and tell these strange little stories in, I just dive in. I, I don't care if they. Um, I don't care if they're. Uh, you know, they don't need to be perfect. Because I'm gonna keep doing them and keep doing them. You know, this is my this is my second graphic novel, and then I did that um, I did that card game in between, and did another 150 drawings of these characters. And I just, you know, when, um, I was showing my friend one of the uh, pages of of Cockhammer Lives, one of the real involved pages last night, and um, she was like, she was telling me because I was confiding in her privately my frustrations about how, how uh, I wasn't I wasn't doing I think Hogan has blue eyes we'll give him some uh, give him some blue eyes here uh, a little lighter than that um, Hogan's pretty good that's so there's Nixon and Hogan colored there um, she was telling me that I had you know she was reminding me like you remember when you first started out um, drawing this stuff you were having such a hard time with it it was so hard for you and now look how good this stuff looks and i don't think it looks great by any matter of means but it definitely looks the way i want it to look like this is how i want these comics to look. even if i was asking somebody else to draw these comics i would want them to be cartoony i'd want them to have big weird eyes i would want all these um, qualities uh maybe they would be a little more refined and a little less amateur looking but they would still look very similar to this um uh, if i was doing them uh if I was uh, commissioning someone to do them. And the thing is, is originally I did, I tried really hard to commission somebody else to do this work. I don't know why I just picked that color. I've got the color up here. Um, initially I uh, commissioned someone else 
was trying to commission a lot of other people actually to do to do this work. I was on Fiverr looking at foreign artists. I was talking to fans of the uh, Strangeville universe to do um, to do uh, some work uh, for me for, for in graphic novels, and it was just everyone's price was just crazy out of my league. Um, or uh, we couldn't work within the, the time constraints I wanted to work in. So eventually I had to just, I said, you know, fuck it. My, my roommate at the time is a tattoo artist and an artist himself. And he was like, dude, I've seen your art. I mean, I know you're not great, but you can get, you can get there. And I was like, man, I would have to spend, you know, years on the fundamentals just to get, just to get to the point of being even passable. And he's like, okay, so do it. And I was like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. I am going to do it. Cause I was burnt out on uh, writing novels at the time. I hated the, the, uh, the literary uh, uh, community that I was a part of. It sucked. And uh, I was just burnt. I was burnt out on the whole, uh, the whole fiction process. So switching to um, like, just throwing myself head first into uh, learning how to uh, how to draw uh, comics was just a it was a the breath of fresh air that I needed. So even though I'm not uh, I'm not nearly where I want to be, I'm uh, I'm on my way, uh, well well on my way, and I do I do surprise myself. Um, not every single page, they're not all winners, but there are pages of this book where I'm like wow, I did it. I'm actually a comic book artist like that. This is legitimately a comic book page. And uh, that's just tenacity, man. That's just day after day after day, like hunkering down and making it my goal, like knowing that I was going to spend a couple of years of my life learning this, um, learning this process little by little, learning the fundamentals. I took some college classes, uh, some college art classes, didn't necessarily help a lot because they weren't cartooning classes, but they were, uh, it did get me in the mindset. It did, it did fire me up, get me in the mindset. I was actually able to get a uh, fine art piece that I, uh, fine art pencil piece I drew in the, um, in the uh, art gallery competition that semester, which made me feel really good that my first, my first semester of art school, I was able to actually be selected for the, for the art show gallery. I thought that was a, uh, pretty neat and it kind of gave me the um it's very similar actually to what i did when i uh when i decided i was going to write novels i took a, a creative writing class in uh i went to the local community college took a creative writing class and ended up winning the editor's choice award uh that year um for a short story i had written in the class and it kind of gave me that extra little boost of confidence that i wanted uh to know that i could go whole hog and write the shit out of novels. And, uh, so the, 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 um, experience with art was and, and getting uh, selected for that gallery ex exhibition w was similar to that. I said, well, fuck yeah, if I can do this, I can, I can draw my own comics. And here we are. That's what I'm doing. And you know, I just kind of encourage everybody, you know, it's, it's most guys won't actually do the work. They like to hear about other people doing the work, but they don't want to do the work themselves. But that really is all it is. It's really just a little bit of work. You just dedicate yourself to the goal. You do the practice, the fundamentals uh, over and over and over and over again. And I like to practice in public. I like to fail publicly. So I made my, he says, I apologize. I got to take off. I'll listen to the rest later. See you, man. Have a good day. Thanks for stopping by. Um, uh It's all, it's fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. And I like to fail publicly when I do that because I get really bored. Like if I tell you to just draw hands uh, for 14 hours a day for three months, you're not, you're going to get burnt out and bored. You're not going to draw hands uh, 14 hours a day for three months for no reason, just to do it, just to try to get better at hands. And I would argue that you might not even get better at hands because you're not inspired to do anything by sitting there and doing hand studies all day long. You're just doing hand studies. And there is, there, there is um, a certain type of individual that would have the mental toughness to just drive through that and get and get better in spite of the lack of creativity, lack of inspiration, what, what have you. But most people need like uh, 
they need more than that. They need more than to just be told like, well, draw hands for 14 hours and you'll be better at hands. Well, yeah, but it's, you know, the, the tedium that comes along with it that uh, can, can really hurt, uh, can hurt someone artistically. Um, so what I like to do is I like to fail uh, publicly. I like to say, okay, well, I'm going to do my first comic and it's going to suck and I'm going to put it out. I'm going to give myself a, uh, you know, a, a, a due date and I'm going to, um, and I'm going to launch this thing on on uh, on uh, crowdfunding, and I'm going to uh, you know I'm going to do uh, everything I can to uh, uh, to get this book done and out, even though it's going to you know be pretty crappy. It allows me to you know if I have to draw the same picture of Nixon and Hogan uh, 700 times in a comic book, then I've drawn Nixon and Hogan 700 times. And that, that is the practicing of fundamentals that I'm talking about. That's, uh, you know, I do it in, I, I like to just do it in big projects and I just learn as I go. I learned how to write novels by writing novels. And my first, the first novel I ever wrote is published. I put it out. I mean, I published, posted it as soon as it, uh, as soon as I was done writing it. I mean, it was uh, a lot, a lot of guys are intimidated by that. They write for years and years and years before they ever, uh, before they ever put anything out. <clears throat> And never put out their first thing. I'm, I'm just, I don't give a fuck. I'm putting out my first thing. Okay, so all of the figures have been flattened now. We, I've babbled my way through the entire flatting process of the characters. So the next step is they're going to need a background. Now, she is standing in a room that has a sort of uh, cream-colored background. So I'm going to drop the cream color. Uh, in for her background here because she's standing in the doorway Nixon and Hogan are still standing outside and I haven't come up with the color for outside yet but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, pick it I'm just going to say it's this color and go and go from there this is what uh, the sky outside is going to look like and for this particular um, for this particular page I didn't draw any backgrounds now the backgrounds are established in previous pages. As I said, this isn't the first. This isn't the establishing page of this uh, scene. So uh, oftentimes, what I do with my style here is um, what is happening here behind this. Okay, I need to drop some color there. that guy there okay um so with my style i often as a very and this is like standard cartoony stuff where my establishing shot will show the backgrounds uh and show like establish them in space where they're at and then in in later uh pages and panels when it's just talking head dialogue like this there's no reason for me to draw in the backgrounds of every single one of these uh panels because we already have established in previous pages where they are what they're standing in front of and whatnot. So for these these types of pages, I just nail in a background, and then I'm going to show you what I do next. Now we're we're completely we're completely uh, flatted now, except there's one other detail here. This comic book is not going to have white borders; it's going to have black borders. So here above this uh, white layer, I'm going to make a new layer, and then I'm going to uh, fill bucket, refer to other layers, and I'm going to nail in a uh, black background into this uh, page. So now this page is 100% uh, flatted. So if I was, uh, what I'd like to do is I like to batch uh, 10 pages of flats. So I would, I would save this, upload it to my uh, drive. Cause I always, I like it's saved on my uh, iPad hard drive, but I don't trust technology at all. And I'm way too lazy to go back and, uh, flat this page over again. I've done it once. I don't ever want to have to flat this page again. So once I finish it like this, I would save it up to my uh, my drive, my uh, cloud drive uh, as a finished flat. And then I would move on and I would do nine more flats. And then I would go back to the beginning, starting with this page. And I would do the color finishes um, on, the, uh, on this uh, page. But for the purposes of this uh, tutorial video here that we're doing, I want to um, show you, a, I want to go all the way through, all the way through from no color to uh, finished. So 
One of the things, oh, I gotta fix uh, Hogan's hair here. For some reason, the, bl the black color, especially when you um, when you put color around it, it gets really weird with how it, uh, it accepts color with the uh, paint bucket tool. I'm not sure why, it's, it's exclusive to black. I'm not sure what that is. Somebody smarter than me uh, at these programs could probably tell me why the color bleeds into um, solid blacks the way it does. I don't know. I gotta fix this one too. Okay. So that's got it. We are completely flattened at this point. So one of the things that uh, I really like that Doug Tenaple does, and I'm sort of tr trying to ape that in my uh, in my style, kind of incorporating one of his little quirky things that he likes to do, is he likes to put shapes when he doesn't when he doesn't do a background when he's just gonna have a, a solid color background behind um, his uh, characters. He puts shapes back there to cut up that uh, to cut up that that background. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how I handle backgrounds. So the first thing I do now that the flatting is completely done is I'll go to my flats layer here. And in order to keep this organized, because now we're going to add a shitload more layers, is I'm going to create an actual folder. And then I'm going to drag the flats into that folder. And so now everything that everything that, that happens with color is just in a color folder because we're going to put a bunch of fucking uh, color uh, layers in here. Now I do everything in their own individual layers so that I can always tweak and change and rearrange and delete things. Cause I, I'm not a good artist, so I have to see it visually. And I have to experiment with my, uh, with my medium to figure out what the right thing, like what, what's going to look the best. And the, uh, the, the way to do that without ruining my, my whole piece is to do every little different thing on its own layer. So the first thing we do is we're going to make a uh, what's called a uh, uh, what I call the background texture layer, and the background texture layer is what I'm going to use to manipulate these uh, these backgrounds. So what I'm going to do is go back to the flats layer, and then I'm going to go to my I'm going to go to my uh, rectangle selection and select that whole top panel. Then I'm going to go to select, select color gamut, and then only select this blue. And so now it pulls in the selection, and it's only got that blue background selected, but not all the blue on the page, only the blue on that top panel, since I did the rectangle selection of the top panel, if, you, if you're following me on that. And now you can see the little dancing, uh, the little dancing uh, ants are just around the blue. So what I can do now is I'm gonna select the, uh, the blue color, go to my background texture layer, and I'm gonna take a darker version of that blue. Then I'm gonna go to my G pen, bump up my brush size to about 100, and I'm just gonna drag a weird shape. I'm actually gonna make it a lot bigger than that. I'm actually gonna take that to about 300, and I'm gonna drag a shape through my background. I like that right there. So now there's a uh, now there's a, a weird dark shape um, in my background. But I'm going to go one step further than that. I'm also going to take that dark color and I'm going to go down here to my gradient tool and I'm going to go. I've got it selected foreground to transparent. And I'm going to drag a gradient from the left-hand bottom corner to the right-hand top corner. And I'm actually going to gra uh, make a gradient that pulls up and creates a, a sort of background shadow layer that comes out of the back. And I think I did a little bit too much. I'm going to, I'm going to knock that back a little bit. So now I have the shape all the way through the, uh, the panel background, and I have a... Uh, a dark gradient that runs through it. Now keep in mind, I have only the blue selected. So when I drug that, uh, when I drug that uh, color through 
I was only drawing, dragging the color through the blue. So it went by, it magically didn't color over anything else. Again, this could, it looks easy. It looks like magic. Like I just drew behind my, my picture, but, I, but you have to uh, very specific, you know, you have to set yourself up with your tools very specifically. Otherwise, if I would have, if I didn't have that selected and I just dragged my, um, uh, my G pen tool across it, it just goes across the entire picture like that. That's not what we want. So with the background continued uh, to be selected and with the, uh, you know, still on the background uh, texture layer, uh, now I'm going to go to a uh, custom, uh, a uh, custom brush that I downloaded from a guy called Flying Brian Designs. It's he has really cheap brushes. I think it's like five bucks, and you get like three hundred brushes. But I have these texture brushes. This one's called Tasty Shading, and I'm actually going to take this uh, Tasty Shading brush, and I'm going to uh, I've got to find the right size, and then I'm going to take the Tasty Shading through the background, and it's really subtle. And I don't even know if you guys will be able to see it. Uh, uh, on the uh, live stream, but in print, you'll definitely be able to see that I've now added a uh, this tiny little dark texture speckle throughout the whole background. So it's now it's now got a. Well, hang on, I have to. Uh, I'm, uh, since it's the same color as the shape, the shape doesn't have any of the texture on it. So now I'm going to kick up to a lighter color and then do the same thing that'll only pick up on the um, on that shape that I put in the background. So now the entire background has a subtle stippled color texture to it. It has a gradient and it has a weird uh, shape that runs through it. And that that just sort of is, is just sort of, um, it's something that the eye won't even necessarily pick up as you're reading through this comic, but it, it uh, it adds a, a depth and subtlety to the uh, to the background that allows those uh, foreground characters to pop up off that page and are really easy and pleasing to the eye and the brain. Those two guys will just pop up out of that background at you, and you'll read through their dialogue and you'll see their uh, you'll see their shapes, and your brain won't even think about it. You won't even see that background because of the, what we just did. So now we're going to repeat that throughout the rest of the, the image. So again, my rectangle uh, selector, we're going just to this second uh, panel here. Then we're gonna go to color, uh, select, uh, select, select color gamut, only grab that blue and then go back to my background uh, layer. So now we're back in a, uh, we're back in a position where we can select that dark color and then run through this background like this and give ourselves another weird shape. Then I'm gonna go down and pull in that gradient. Then I'm gonna go up and grab that lighter color and go in with the shading tool. And, uh, oh, I need to do the back, I need to do the, the dark color first. And we're gonna go to the shading tool and we're gonna speckle in that texture, then kick it to a lighter one and kick in that texture in the shape. And just like that, even with me talking, we did the same thing we did in that top layer or that top panel in the second panel. And it took us about 30 seconds to do it. That's how quick, as long as you're using your tools correctly and you have your tools calibrated correctly, you can knock through these processes so fast. So now we're going to do her. Uh, we're going to do her uh, panel now. And I'll get off here. I'm going to go back to the rectangle select, grab that. Select color gamut, grab her background color only, then go back to the background texture layer. And I'll grab her background color, take it down to a darker color, and I will drag that weird shape through her panel. Now I'll go in, do the gradient. Now I'll go in and do the shading. And that one's done, just like that, 30 seconds. And we have these uh, interesting but subtle backgrounds that 
enhance the foreground characters. And I only do this when I don't have a background. When I do have backgrounds, I just color the backgrounds the same way I color the foregrounds. And those pages take usually a lot longer uh, to do than these. These, uh, and that's that's the reason I do this. When I have these talking head pages, and I don't put um, put uh, backgrounds in them, you know, it allows me to cut through really quickly, really really quickly. That, that, and like that. So we are now finished with our uh, backgrounds. Our backgrounds are 100% finished for this project. And now, again, note whenever I say that I can, I can play with things if I do them on their own layers. We did all that on their own layer. So when I when I turn off that background texture layer, all that goes away. And then I turn it back on and it all comes back. So if there's something that I don't like, I didn't integrate it with my flats layer, and then I would have to go in and manually erase all that stuff, and it would take so much time. I put it on its own layer, and it allows me to, if I don't like this piece right here, I can just uh, wipe it and start over on that background texture layer and not have to... Uh, worry about anything, but I do like it. So we're going to keep it and we're going to save it. And that is the background. So now the only thing left to do here is we have to shade the uh, characters. And then if there are any uh, motion effects that we need to do and, uh, and other lighting effects, like putting, um, like putting a white spot on the eyes or a shine on the uh, hookers titties, uh, we'll do that last. I always do that last. So the next the next layer, what I do as soon as I finish the background is I make a whole nother layer and I call this layer the shadow layer or the shade layer. And then I go back to my flats. We're just going to do Nixon. So I go to the select uh, color gamut. Then I grab his hoodie color, his skin color, his hat color. And click OK, and now those elements are um, selected from the flats layer. I can now go to the shading layer, and I go up here to the uh, opacity slider, and I drop this thing down to like 60% right off the bat. Just go to black, and I change my pin my pin size of my G pin to what's appropriate, and I can just start dropping in shadow here. and really quickly and easily give him, um, these are what are called, I, I use the method uh, of shading called cell shading. And cell shading is uh, often, it's often used in animation. Uh, and it's a quicker, it's a quicker way to, um, it's like a shortcut, shorthand version of, um, of, sh of shading and highlighting that still works for the, for the brain but it gives it a very cartoony uh, quality, very animated quality. Now, this is a little, if you, as you can see, this is a little dark for a shadow. So I'm actually gonna go back to that slider, that opacity slider and knock that down to about 16%, maybe a little bit darker than that. Maybe I'll go up to about 20% and then that is starting to look real good. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that's starting to look real good uh, as far as the, um, the uh, shading layer goes. So I'm just going to go back and forth from the um, the G pen to the uh, eraser tool and knock in all of the parts that I think uh, need to be in shadow. And shading your shading your piece is as much of an art as uh, drawing your piece. And your shading style is going to be its own unique thing, just like your uh, just like your penciling style, just like your inking style, the shading style is gonna be all its own thing. I am a minimalist uh, shader because uh, there's like a rule in, uh, in filmmaking where if you're doing a comedy, uh, com comedies are often filmed in full light with very little shadow 
And then like horror movies and melodramas and suspense movies are filmed more in deep shadow. And like noir film is the um, the deepest shadow you can get. And so a, a, a guy like Mike Mignola, who does the Hellboy comics, he, he illustrates in the darkest, most noir style of uh, inking and shadowing you can possibly do. He would knock, you know, this, this shading would be solid black and would knock in half a Hogan's face would be laid out, laid out in shadow. And every, every uh, uh, panel would have super dark shadows like that. But um, since I go, since these comics, since the strange world universe is more of a comedy, I set my, uh, I do very minimal shading and everything is, is pretty much out in the open light with a really basic uh, light source, one uh, one uh, one side light source. So in other words, you could you can do as many, <laughs> you can get as complex with your lighting and shading as you want, and th and it can get extremely complex. I could be uh, if I wanted to, I could be shading um, one angle here. I could be shading it turquoise, and I could come in with orange from this layer and I can have multiple color uh, sources, a turquoise color source, an orange color source, and a deep dark noir shadow. I mean, you can get crazy with your, um, uh, with your shading style and comic book artists often do. If there's one thing that comics love to do, it's to do things uh, in uh, excess. And so there's guys that just go nuts with multiple, um, multiple light sources and deep, Deep noir shading. Um, I don't personally do any of that. I keep it minimal because, like I said, I'm going for comedy, and comedy is more about um, situational and and uh, dialogue humor. These big exaggerated um, uh, facial expressions and these big exaggerated facial ex silly facial expressions like this work the best in full light. So that's that's how I uh, do my uh, my. That's how I've uh, sort of built my my lighting and shading style, like style, uh, the, the color and shading theory of the strange world comics. You might think that, you know, I'm just drawing, uh, dicks and titties and big asses. So you wouldn't think there would be a lot of thought put into the, um, the, 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 uh, the actual artistic process, but believe it or not, a lot of thought goes into it. Uh, so that is the shading done for, Nixon. So now what I'm going to do is make, an, and while I've still got him selected, uh, shit, I didn't do this one down here. I still have to do this panel. But the, the next process is exactly the same. Uh, there we go one down the back of his neck there this next process is exactly the same except now we do a whole nother uh layer we call that the highlight layer and i'll switch from black to white and do the same thing where i drop the opacity down and now i will work on the opposite angle where the lighting is coming from and what I often do is the background, I'll have the background of shadow coming from this direction, but the foreground lighting coming from that same direction. Uh, and it kind of, it kind of, it's another way to separate the foreground from the background. Uh, so the highlights here are coming from the opposite direction as the background lighting. And we'll hit all those like this. And this is a little too light. Uh, for my taste, he looks like he's basically standing under a spotlight. So I'm going to knock that opacity down. And that's why I do it that way. Instead of selecting a color and shading in colors, I, I shade in um, tones instead. And I can change that tone. Um, based on this opacity slider. And so I'm going to knock those shadows back a little bit and uh, make that a little less just a little less intense as we hit all the little corners and edges. This is what, uh, this is what is like, again, in, in film, you would call this like rim lighting where you're only focused on lighting the, the corners and edges 
of the character. And again, it's very, it's very uh, minimalist. There are guys that go absolutely hog nuts crazy on their um, lighting and shading, but they do, uh, you know, gritty, dark stories and, and things like that. Like Hellboy has a lot of comedy in it, but at its core, at its core, it's like a noir, um, gothic style. Uh, horror comic so it has uh, those elements in its uh, con considered in in the artistic expression whereas the Strangeville stories are very uh, goofy and rely a lot on exaggerated reactions and expressions so we're not worried about going crazy with the uh, With the lighting and shading, just enough, just enough to give it. So all we're trying to achieve, what are we trying to achieve even with these? I could have, I could just leave this, I could just leave this off. I could just take these layers off completely and leave and leave this guy looking just like this. So why don't I want him to just look colored? I want him to look. I want to give him depth. Those that shading and uh, highlight layer. Even though they're very minimalist, they still give him a depth. They still give the this this uh, arm now looks cylindrical, and it looks like it's in front of his uh, uh, trunk here, his uh, his torso. It actually separates those two pieces of his body and gives it a three dimensional look to it. Very subtle, again, very rudimentary. It's more of a um, it's more of a shortcut than it is an actually informed um, shape. It's more of an the uh, of an implied shape, and imp implied uh, texture, and implied uh, form, which is what I like about animation. the 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 interesting thing about the human brain and animation is we can really bend the rules to the breaking point, and the the human mind will still sort of fill in those blanks and say, yeah, that arm is a, is a cylinder, even though we only have a small light uh, strip and a small dark strip here that separates these two uh, pieces of anatomy. It's still, it's still um, the brain only needs a little bit of help and it'll fill in the rest. That's pretty cool. So that's all kind of color. Like if you were to go, if, if you were starting out as an artist, and you and you were overwhelmed by all of this you know we can knock this all back all the way back all the way back to just a drawing layer to just a pencil layer and you can see where the construction lines of this piece started and so if you're overwhelmed by all this, if you're seeing all this and saying, well, I'm, I, I could never, I could never do that. I could never draw like that. Keep in mind, it all starts with the construction of pencils. You build your entire skeletal structure of the image in your pencils and everything else is you're just layering subtly on top of it. So I take my pencils and I add my inks and I take my pencils away. Then I add my colors. Then I add my shadows, or then I add my background. Then I add my shadows, and then I add my highlights. And now it has a three-dimensional look to it. But it's all one slow, methodical process at a time. You just have to take your time. You have to be, you have to have the patience of an elephant to be an artist. You really do. And you have to love it. You have to love each one of these processes. Now I'm going back through with the highlight. And I'm just adding a little bit of texture to the hat to kind of break it up. And I might even add a little bit of texture down here to the uh, to the uh, jacket. Just little little bits here and there. And again, that so that adds. So so what have we done now? We've taken the the cylinder and we've kind of uh, added a little bit of texture to it. It gives it kind of. Since I didn't go in with the inks and create fabric ripples, which I could do, you know. I could go here into the inks 
and I could uh, I could make fabric fabric ripples in his uh, in his shirt or in his hoodie hoodie uh, sleeve and make it look like it's wrinkled up. But instead of doing that, we're just going to drop a couple of highlights into it and call it a day. Because again, minimalist. We're just as a as an as a cartoonist, we are just throwing the the minimal amount of uh, information down. We're shorthanding everything uh, and and moving on. So uh, we're done with Nixon's. Uh, work now there was a little spot up here that i wanted to fix do you see how i missed this uh background spot right here somehow so we're gonna go in to the flats layer select this back this naked background so there's a little spot of the original blue background back there i'm gonna grab that color grab the uh uh paint bucket and i'm just gonna drop that in and then you see there's still two little lines there, so we're going to have to grab that, lasso that. And then I saw some other stuff in here, too, that didn't get lassoed, so I'm going to lasso that little spot and that little spot. And then up here in his beard, there's a spot that I didn't catch either. Now, these are very, very small. Very, very small. They are not going to show up in the print version, probably. But every little bit, you know, helps. Every little bit helps. So now we grab that little background spot, which, again, you maybe would have barely even noticed in the print version, but I just like to go in and make sure every little, every little thing is taken care of. So now that Nixon's done, now we're going to color Hogan or uh, rather we're going to shade him and highlight him. So we're going to go back to our flats layer, select, select color gamut. We're going to select his hoodie color, his uh, beard color, his face color and his hat color. And now we have Hogan all selected. So now we're going to go back to the shade layer kick down to uh, black, go back to our G pin, go up to about a size 30 brush, and we're going to start working on Hogan's, and he's gonna be the same, the light is coming from the same direction for him too, so all his shadow is gonna be off here to the right. And we're gonna shade him up. And like I said, we're just creating volume, we're creating uh, texture, And this is a real, I wanted to do this page because it's pretty simple. There's not a lot to it. Like that's pretty much all I'm going to shade on Hogan uh, for this panel. And I'm going to go down here and shade this panel as well. couple little spots in here his beard hangs over the hoodie the hoodie uh whatever you would call that neck hangs over there his arm up here is in shadow off to there the inside of his sleeves are in shadow i could even throw a little shadow under the the uh where he's got the sleeve rolled up there and then drop some shadow right there. And we're pretty much, I'll throw shadow there. Pretty much done with the inside of the hood of the hoodie. And that's pretty much the extent of Hogan's, oh, we're gonna do his hand over here. We'll go here, we'll do under the fingers. We'll do the back of this finger here. We'll do the underneath part and the side of these fingers here, and then around the back of the hand, and we'll call that done. And we'll switch over to the highlight, go over to the white on the highlight layer. And again, that's the opacity's turned down to 14, or 24 rather, so it's a very, um, subtle rim lighting highlight job that we're doing. Nothing too crazy. See, if I turn this all the way up, 
to the full light, it looks like that light is right next to him. It's a blinding light. It's it's, it's so so powerful. The light is so powerful. It's actually um, drowning out the uh, the color of his of the character. So we drop that down to. Pretty subtle. And that's pretty much, Hogan doesn't need a lot. We're going to do his nose, his lip right there and right there. We already did all of that. Come around this side. Hit the tops of the knuckles. Hit this side of the sleeve. And that's pretty much that. We'll hit him over here real quick. There, there, there. Hit it there. Clean that up. There, there, there. There, there. Pretty much like that. And uh, Hogan is now highlighted and so the only other thing we need to do is we need to highlight a couple of spots on the black mage diary and we need to do the hooker we'll do the hooker real quick save this i'm also a, a crazy so my my t1 here these hotkeys my t1 and the hotkeys you actually can um let's see what i can do with this you can get pull them in in uh, clip studio on the ipad pro you can pull them in or push them away off to the side of the uh, side of the iPad like that, and then I have hotkeyed uh, my back my uh, my um, undo tool and my save tool. Those are the two. So T1 and T2 is just I'm constantly erasing something I don't like or saving all the stuff that I do like because I am lazy and I don't want to ever have to um, do the shading on this uh, page ever again. So we're going to go to select color gamut from the flats layer again. We're going to grab her skin color and her hair color. There's really not much. I guess we can do these titty rings, but there's not. They're going to be real subtle in their uh, shading and everything. So now we're going to go to the shade layer, back to black, still in the G pen, thirty size thirty um, brush, and then we're just going to hit her. From that same direction, the uh, shadows from the right and the highlights from the left. Hit these pieces of hair down here and New artists, and I, I was exactly the same way, are often intimidated by shading because they don't know where to put the shadows. They don't know where to put the highlights. And I always tell them, take pictures. Set up a light, a bright light to the left of something. Take a picture of it with your phone and then look at where the shadows fall, look at where the highlights fall. Turn it black and white with your phone editing software and look at the black and white where the where the um, shadows fall and where the uh, where the highlights fall, and I, I took um, what's happening here? I took uh, a photography class in high school, and I really and I learned the fundamentals of photography before I even got into filmmaking. But for me, uh, filmmaking well for me that that uh, that photography class informed my my filmmaking cinematography style and then the cinematography style informed this art style uh, for how I'm gonna uh, shade and highlight things um, but all I think kind of all artistic mediums use uh, if not exactly the same a very similar language so if you learn the art of film cinematography you already know, photography and if you know those two things then you already know how to uh, highlight and shade and color uh, art it's all the same it's all the same fundamental principles 
If you learn it in one medium, you can adapt it to any other medium. It's all the same language. And I would argue that telling a story with pictures is the same, whether you're doing it in photography or, or in a movie, or if you're um, Yeah, you can't even see that shit. I don't do that. How it is. I guess we'll go into the shade and shade them a little bit. So if you ever wonder how an idiot like me can do all these different can do all these different art forms, like how the fuck is that idiot? able to make movies and draw pictures and all this stuff that he does. It's because it's all pretty much the same. It's all uh, the same theory. Like I learned it in my twenties and it's the same. No matter what you're doing, a screenplay or a, or a, or a comic book script is very similar to a novel. You just do it a little bit different. Everything is a little bit different from everything else, but the fundamentals are the same. Like you're going to create drama the same way. In any in any script, shit, I, uh, I fucked up. I didn't highlight her hair. Uh, you're gonna create drama. You're gonna do character development. You're gonna you're gonna create uh, all these different story storytelling devices the same way, no matter what you're writing. And each medium has its own. Uh, specialties that other mediums like you can't you don't have music to create drama in comic books but you do in movies um, you don't have the same inner inner monologue in character like uh, like um, a uh, a storytelling device like uh, like an unreliable narrator is a lot harder to do in movies and comics than it is in novels um, so each medium ha like has its own um, strengths, its own like unique um, uh, so storytelling devices that you can use. But, but the fundamentals are the same no matter what. So the last thing we need to do here, oh, I still need to do the. I need to drop in some uh, some highlights and shading on the Black Mage Diary here real quick, and then we'll be. It will be done. And in an hour and a half, while running my mouth and talking to the chat, I was able to uh, color and finish an entire comic book page for you guys. Let's go under his fingers here. And See the shading is very subtle. There's not there's not much to it. You can't even really see that. In print, it'll be a lot easier to see. Staring at it on a computer screen like this isn't the ideal way to look at uh, this stuff for the subtle stuff. Obviously, you can tell that I've been coloring the shit out of this page for an hour and a half, but uh, little subtle things like this. Or, uh, these highlights for the gold are barely even showing up, so I'll probably hit them in uh, the next little process that I'm going to do, which is a real quick one. And the, and the last one, we're almost done, we're almost out of here, gang. We're almost finished. All right, all that, put a little texture, a little texture spots in there. I should probably go up and do it on there. Well, there's not a lot of room for it. All right. Black Mage Diary, man. That was this fucking book was created by my buddy uh, PJ, this FX Master PJ back in fucking 2006 or 2007. And I have never let this thing go. This thing has been the centerpiece of the entire Strangeville universe for 15 fucking years. And here it is again, the central point in this uh, in this brand new comic book I'm doing. 
Um, so the last, uh, the, the last little thing we need to do, and this really touches everything off, and really adds that little spark to it, is we're going to go up here above the ink layer. We're going to make one more layer, and then this layer is just going to be the white highlights that we're going to add to their eyes. And then since Nixon has black hair, we drop in the, the texture of his hair in white over the solid black. So now, now Nixon has some texture and some shine off his hair. You can imagine how black hair, you can still see sheen and shine coming off of it. That's how that works. Put a little up here in there too. That's how you pull that off uh, in shorthand in cartoons. You just throw white on top of the black, and then I'll go over his eyes here. And then Hogan's eyes. The hooker's eyes. And I need to do Hogan's eyes down here. And the other thing I like to do for the women to give her lips a um, glossy, uh, wet, moist appearance, throw in some, uh, some white on the lips. And then I also like to go in and do... Uh, a white sheen on the titties that make her, and I do them on her thighs and her ass too. And that makes the, uh, the female, the female body look smooth and kind of shiny. And so the, la the very last thing I would do is if this uh, page had any um, motion that I needed to put in, I would add motion to uh, so like sound effects, shoom, boof, smack, things like that. This page doesn't need any of those. So there's literally nothing else uh, that I need to do with this page. This page is, I think 100% finished. I think we are done, gang. Oh, let me throw those. Uh, texture lines in Nixon's hair down there. That is. Oh, I was going to I was going to put them in these. Uh, I was going to drop a. white spot into these uh, gold spots on the Black Mage Diary to give them uh, the gold a uh, shiny appearance. So there's that. And there's just one more thing I want to do. Well, the last thing as I'm just now I'm going through, because this is a finished page, so now I'm kind of going through looking at the um, the lettering and making sure that this is all centered the right way. And if you look at this bubble, it's kind of centered up to the, it's off centered to the top left. So I'm actually going to go in and grab that dialogue with my uh, text tool. And I'm going to recenter that somehow it, it didn't end up centered correctly. So that's it, man. I, I, that's a finished page from, uh, Cockhammer Lives the Graphic Novel. And uh, I don't know if that's better or worse. That's like even more out of focus. That's how you do it, gay. About an hour and a half with a bunch of babbling. I could have done that at about 45. Because, like I said, there's no motion lines. There's no um, sound effects. So this, this page is, is one of the less uh, 
involved pages in the book. You know, sometimes there's a lot of a dial, like an information dump, a dialogue dump, and that's what this is. And it'll be two or three pages in a row like this of just talking heads, kind of advancing the plot along. Um, and those are easy pages. There's a lot, there's pages that are a lot harder to do than this. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys one, uh, a page that was extremely complex. Um, let me show you guys a uh, a page real quick before we go that was extremely involved. This is a full page splash page, but it's got a ton of effects. It's got bloody effects on the dead hooker. It's got um, a portal effect. It's got a sound effect. It's got a full background that had to be textured and colored and shaded and all these little you know, DVDs on the back wall. There's even texture on these posters on the back wall. And then all the, the characters. I actually did a little bit of rim lighting that I said I usually don't do with the, uh, with the colors since they're in a, an orange uh, portal here. I decided to do the uh, highlights orange instead of white, and uh, that was this page took me a long time. But you can see the, all those fundamental things we talked about: the shading layer, the uh, the uh, whites on the eyes, um, the the rim lighting, the uh, you know all those elements are are present. Even the uh, the the shading, the uh, uh, what do you call that gradient coming down off the uh, off the ceiling down onto the wall in the background. This was a very, very involved page. It took me quite a while to, to do this page. It took me probably took me about an hour and a half to color this page just by itself. So anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, in Strangeville these days, gang, it's just that all day, every day. No breaks. And I've got about 130 more of those to do, and then we will launch the crowdfunder. Hello, how are you doing today? Uh, Durlock asks. I'm doing doing well, Durlock. Uh, we're about we're wrapped up here. I just did an hour and a half um, uh, coloring tutorial on my comic book page, and uh, we're about to get up out of here. I'm tired of talking. I need to uh, eat lunch and then uh, crack out a couple more pages. I like to average about, um, I like to average about uh, three, three to five pages a day, depending on the intensity of the pages or the intensity of my day, what I need to accomplish in a day. Now I do have my life completely built around the creation of art. So the majority of my day, every single day is spent creating art. But there are some days that life gets in the way and I need to do a lot of laundry or I need to do grocery shopping. I actually do need to go grocery shopping, but I think I need to do, I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, and my phone's ringing over there. So I'm going to jump off here and uh, see who, who's calling my ass in the middle of the damn day and uh, do another page offline a lot faster than this one. So that's how you, uh, that's how you uh, color a comic book page, gang. We'll see you next time. Peace.